direct to you. Thanks, my wonderful town. This is a very sophisticated device. It's an implantable computer system with telemetry, meaning it can send out signals to external devices. So uh, that's a very sophisticated device, a permanently implanted medical device with telemetry capability. Well, I mean, I, I think the impact obviously is is medical. That is, uh, we're looking to have an impact on the lives of patients who have this very common disease called coronary artery disease, where your arteries get blocked with the buildup of plaque. It's called atherosclerosis. And these plaques can tear open uh, spontaneously for reasons we're not always clear. Sometimes you cough, you lift a heavy weight, sometimes for no reason whatsoever. And if that plaque tears, a blood clot can form inside your heart artery. When that happens, you block off the artery and you lose blood flow to the heart muscle. That's called, in you know, layman's terms, a heart attack. In medical terms, we call it a myocardial infarction, meaning the death of heart muscle. Because within four or five hours after you close the artery, all the muscle downstream from that blockage is dead. So the purpose of this device, the goal with this device, is to be like an early warning system. Uh, imagine you could predict when a tornado was going to hit a house six hours before it hit the house. You might save the people's lives inside the house, right? That's what this device is. It's an it's a early warning system that something has ruptured in your heart artery that it might have closed for maybe a minute or two, and that it's likely to close again and either kill you or disable you. But we're going to give you a warning about it maybe six hours before, maybe 24 hours before, maybe a week before, and have a chance to go in, take a picture of it, put a stent in, or do a bypass surgery to open up the blockage or bypass it, and send you home feeling good, and you, the heart attack that was going to kill you, say, three days from now, you never even had it. How's that for, it's like a time machine. Absolutely, and, you know, obviously the impact is pretty easy to see there. Uh, but to say that, you know, you're in a situation, does it always catch it? I mean, based on some of the results that you've seen so far, does it always catch it? Or is there a situation where maybe, you know, it catches it only a day before as opposed to a week before? We'd love to catch it 10 minutes before it would be way better than we're doing today. The average time from the onset of symptoms of a heart attack to arriving at a hospital today in the U.S. is three hours. In that three hours, and then it takes another two hours or so to open your blocked artery with a balloon and a stent, that's five hours. In that five-hour period, about 95% of the muscle's dead. What if we could even alert you, say, five minutes before, ten minutes before, how about right even at the time? And this thing goes off, bzz, bzz, bzz. you call 911, now we have you at the hospital at 45 minutes. We have the balloon down at three and a half hours instead of five hours. That saves half the heart muscle. And that, to some degree, might be one of our worst cases where we don't give you a warning the day before or the week before. We give it to you when it actually happens, which I think will actually be very unusual about 10 or 20% of the time, I think about 80% of the time, we're going to give you a heads up hours or days before it actually is the big one. Well, obviously, you know, you, you know uh, that one could get to it. It's already about to happen or you know, come into your right that way with surgery or whatever you know, obviously do. Um, but say there's a situation where, uh, you know, there's, this is a question that the cardiologists are always asking, I'm sure, but you know, how do you prevent something like this from even getting to that one where you need this in your system? Well, that's a great question, and obviously that's about prevention. And this device is not saying to patients, okay, we got you covered, go ahead, eat the Big Mac, smoke three packs a day, have your blood pressure uncontrolled, put on 100 pounds and become diabetic. No, obviously all of those things remain critically important for patients to prevent this disease from happening, to reduce the likelihood of a heart attack from happening once you have the disease. And that means things like cholesterol-lowering medications, lowering your blood pressure, 
exercising, not smoking, all those rules still stay in place. But this is your insurance policy because all of that only reduces heart attack rates by about 30 or 40 percent. Well, you know, as a physician, obviously there's a tremendous gratification. One-on-one -on -one with a patient in the cath lab, if I put a stent in and help a patient open up a blocked artery, there's a lot of satisfaction to, to, to help an individual and a patient and deal with the family, and that's a great job, being a doctor. But one of the great, great things about being an inventor or making new things is that you may have the chance to impact not just one life at a time, but, for example, the stent that we developed, my father, my brother, and I, has been implanted in more than 5 million patients. Well, I'm never going to be able to do 5 million stent implants in my life and impact that many people. So it's a way to amplify your ability to impact and improve patients' health. Uh, not one patient at a time, which is very gratifying, but on a larger scale. This particular device... Uh, I would say is the most exciting thing that I've ever done or that we've ever done, my father, brother, and I, and we're sort of co-inventors on this as well, uh, because I've seen the devastating effects of heart attacks on my patients that I care for. And I, we have all know brothers, sisters, friends, friends of family who have had family members in their 50s, 40s, sometimes as young as that, drop dead from a heart attack or have a massive heart attack at age 45 and disable them. What if we could stop, even, even if we only like prevented half of them? I believe that would be a huge breakthrough. So I'm very excited about the potential of this technology. Well, you know, in its first generation device that we have now, I think right now, based on the invasiveness of it, you have to have a lead inside your heart, a wire. Uh, I think for this device, we'll probably be limited um, to, to a large degree to moderate to high-risk patients. We are working on technology that will allow a simpler device that will be much easier to implant, that does not require a wire to be implanted into your heart, that may have nearly the same capability. If we can do that and make it really tiny and hook it into a network like OnStar type network, and maybe every man over the age of 50 gets one for a birthday present if his wife likes him, and if she doesn't, then she won't get one. Well, that's fantastic, and uh, I appreciate you spending the time with us today. My pleasure.